Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to a brand new episode of the RSL Show. We're so glad you're here with us. Uh, today, we've got Alex Napolis and Joshua Clark. What's up, guys? Howdy, howdy. Andy sounds very enthusiastic to be here today. Yeah, I just had a I had a coffee, so shout out Starbucks. Uh, I'm hyped up. I'm well caffeinated, but uh, I'm actually pretty excited because uh, we're finally getting rumors. We're finally getting some momentum on some potential signings, um, and I think it's just the start. I hope it's just the start, but what, three in the last two days? Why can I only think of two right now? Because one yeah. was like a... Oh, nah, that's right. The, the Swedish guy. I can't okay. say his name. I'm not even going to try. <laughs> okay. The guy from Groin again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Hard pass. <laughs> I don't know. I can't pronounce his name either, so I'm not, I'm not going to try either. <laughs> yeah, but rumored to be a DP um, far from any kind of DP numbers he puts yeah. up. I, yeah, just not maybe 10 years ago, but not right now. It, immediately looking at him, um, like pulling up his his information and kind of deep diving into him a little bit. For whatever reason, he's been frozen out of Groin again. Um, hasn't played a game for them since I believe it was September 29th. So he's been out of the squad for a while. Um, I don't know, just didn't really didn't really move the needle for me. You know, uh, I completely understand. You know, it's it's one of those that. I don't know. It, it 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 feels weird to say, but I don't think he's good enough for Real Salt Lake. Yeah, and that no, feels and, and weird to say. Luckily, luckily, no, and that's a good thing. That's a good thing. That's I think that's that points to Real Salt Lake is heading in a in a better direction per se. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, but yeah, just that one didn't really. Just looking into him, um, didn't really move the needle for me. And luckily, it doesn't sound like it has a lot of legs behind it, so we might not. Uh, might not be seeing that one come over. That's incredible. What other news do you have for us, Alex? There is validity to what Tom Bogert has um, tweeted out today. Uh, Ralph Lake has been linked to two names um, early this morning. One being Josh Windaz out of Sheffield Wednesday. And the other one being uh, Alexander... I can't pronounce his last Al- name. Alexandros Katranis. There you go. That uh, A Greek defender... From the Polish league, mm. yes. So, so your so your source is Tom Bogert, huh? My my source is <laughs> is Tom Bogert. <laughs> okay, but what can you tell us? Because we here at the RSL show, we try to do right, and we try to interrogate our quote unquote sources, whether they're named or unnamed. Which of the two? carry weight and is it both is it one what can you hint at what can we give the listeners so they both carry weight just one a little bit more than the other um do you guys want to start with the one that does or doesn't can we guess go go for it well if if i look at it realistically i would say that the defender is more likely because he's younger however Inside Josh, Josh number two, salty Josh, <laughs> really wants it to be a Josh Windass because I really want that jersey. Um, I also think he's a phenomenal player. I've, I've had him on my FIFA teams for years. So I, I genuinely like the guy, but the name is incredible. So ugh, kills me, but I have to guess that Katranis is more likely. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's kind of what my gut's telling me, too. So <laughs> so from what it sounds like is that Josh Windass is the player that has been in conversation uh, with Real Salt Lake. It is. It looks like he is someone that they were potentially looking at, but he doesn't fit the profile per exactly of what the club is looking for. They want a young guy who can play the 10 as well as play on the wings and play up top. He Windass has the up top. He has the the ten, but not necessarily the wing play that Real Salt Lake is looking for, and not necessarily the age that Real Salt Lake is looking for. It is an option. It is something that's that was talked about, but that one has a little bit less weight, from what I know. All right, that's fine. It's okay. It's okay, everybody. The fact that we're linked with players at all is a miracle. So let's be happy about that. Not outside of the realm of possibility but it does have less weight. The one who does have weight is Katranis, um, coming over from the Polish League. 
Rouse Lake is in the market for a defender. This one just so happens to be a left back. Conversations have been particularly well for Real Salt Lake on this end. Um, player has agreed that he would like to come here, but the question is the contract. He's obviously he's out of contract in the summer. He is a free agent. Whether that happens in the summer, whether that happens in the now, yet to be seen. Hmm. And he's 25 years old. And he's 25. So arguably primish. And overall, I mean, overall, it makes sense because Ross Lake have done, um, have really stacked up their international roster spots. So they have plenty available at the moment to make said moves. Um, and it, that's what it sounds like. It, that's what it kind of sounds like they're going for. They're looking for someone who can play across the top four, um, someone who can play in the 10, and someone to reinforce that back line, which I thought was a big need for Ross Lake. Yeah, and I, I know we talked about it last week, but I, I was kind of harping on, you know, either bring in a center back or a left back so Vera could slot into the middle. So I think this is the, the perfect kind of signing. Oh, 100%. Absolutely. And, you know, I did, po- contrary to popular belief, you know, it is popular to uh, dig on some players and, and find highlights and figure out their play style. So, you know, I was doing some research on Katranis earlier. Uh, no, I do not watch this Polish club that I'm not even going to try to say and slaughter uh, religiously. But from what I could see, he reminds me a lot of Aaron Herrera Um, up and down the wing, like crazy, really hard nose gets in players faces, hard tackles um, and pretty good distribution. So I think it's a step up from probably, you know, Oviedo and Ellie playing out there, maybe even a Brody, but yeah, I think it's a good, it's good potential signing. I like it. Well, and I mean, just even looking at like what what the depth looks like right now for Ross Lake and like what the team looks like right now, I think the only big questions going into the season at this point is the fullback positions. I think those are two. I think both the right back and the left back are completely up for grabs. You look at the rest of the squad and you kind of already have an idea of who has what position. Obviously, Chicho up top, um, Gomez and Luna on the wings. The midfield is a little bit contested too, right between Ojeda, Palacio, and Ruiz coming back. Um, we already know we already know who the center backs are going to be, but the questions are those fullback positions, and I think those are 100 percent up for grabs. And so bringing in Katranis can can really help build that competition in that fullback room. Yeah, I I would think it's safe to say that fullback wise, we don't really have a shining star, right? Mm-hmm. They're kind of just guys right now. They can be studs, right? Like Ginelli's a stud. But he's is he a fullback, right? Brody, he's fallen off some. Yeah. But he's still a decent player. And Oviedo's obviously fallen off some too, and is still a decent player, but no one is a you know, just a straight up badass defender that we kind of need right now. And that's what that's what they are looking for um in Katranis. Um I'm still yet to do that deep dive to kind of see what he really brings, but just overall looking at what I've been able to see from Katranis, I think that he could be a good player to step in and try to take that fullback position. Yeah, and I don't honestly, it would be, I mean, at this point, I wouldn't be surprised to see an academy or a draft pick step in and take it. Like it's it's kind of in that kind of dire straits, it feels like. Kevin Bonilla is going to be a guy to keep an eye on. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's, he's a very good player, and he's going to be interesting to see where he kind of fits in with this roster. Yeah, so that's actually going to be an exciting uh, position group to watch this year. I, I would not be shocked if at the end of the year we're not talking about Brody, we're not talking about Oviedo, we're we're talking about other guys. And I really hope Brody gets closer to what he performed in 2022 rather than what he performed last year. Because sure. like you mentioned, he did have a little bit of a decline. He wasn't necessarily the same player that we saw and we liked Brody in 2022. So mm-hmm. hopefully he can get back to that 2022 Brody. I agree. Because if not, uh, danger of losing your job. Yeah, for mm-hmm. sure. So, so far with the names that we just discussed, whether they hold weight or they don't, and then also uh, taking into account Barajas, who uh, hit training and got some interviews today, um, where do, where are we kind of grading the moves from the FO uh, so far? I know we're a little, some would argue it's a little late, some could say it's still early, but just from the conversations and the chats or the rumors linked, uh, are they doing a great job? Where where would you rate them on a scale from one to ten so far? Oh man, I think it's way too early to even decide that. If you had to put a little number on a scale, if you had to start, For, you, you need a starting point. Oh man, 
that's because because you can take not, it that's into not account. A, that's not a fair question for for the FO, honestly. <laughs> It's not, it's not, I, it's too early, right? I think Fidel is a great addition. I think, you know, the draft picks, I think they're all good additions, right? To be seen. But again, every, everything we've signed right now is all perspective, right? There's, they could bust they, or they could boom. And it's not fair to judge on that yet. So I think on, well, we'll give them a grade on, uh, on prospects, right? I think they're got like a seven or an eight on prospective players. That's what I mean. Yeah, that, yeah. yeah. But as far as like the rumors go, like it's cool that we're linked. It really is. Uh, but still too early. I'm going to grade them on if they get business done. Well, and, and so far the only business that really has been done is Fidel Barajas. So far the only business they've done is Fidel Barajas. I think if we... Uh, like I like Josh said, we got to give them a little bit of time. Um, it's still too early in the window. Um, a lot of teams have made some really big moves, but I think Ross Lake is more shifting towards building the youth, finding those young players who can come in and make a difference. And I like I like the I like that road that they're beginning to take with focusing on younger players. Um, this is a, if you really look at it, this is a really young squad with a lot of really interesting prospects: Diego Luna, Andres Gomez, Nelson Palacio. Fidel Barajas now coming in. Ojeda of, to an extent. Oh Yeah, Ojeda to Evers, an extent. Vera to Mania. an extent. Exactly. There's yeah. so much young talent coming up. Um, and so I kind of like this shift of focusing more on 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 youth prospects and building up y- younger players while at the same time focusing on being competitive and, and hopefully competing for a title. Right, and, and bringing in some of those veterans that can also help guide the young players, right? Those Absolutely. Those are often forgotten, but they're they're very important, right? And losing like a Demir, that kind of presence, I hope we can bring in someone else to also be that that good influence on players to really help them become good, true professionals. I know we've lost some quote unquote key players, right? And, and I know it sucks. It sucks for fans. Like it sucks to those players. But let's really take an honest look. Let's step back into the shoes after we just get eliminated by Houston. Are we really losing that much with Rubin? No, no, he, he, I'll give him all the credit in the world for that assist and those two goals um, versus Austin and that assist that he had uh, LAFC. But really besides that, Ruby Rubin didn't really do much as far as the stat sheet goes um, okay. in 2023. Are, are we losing that much in Danny Musowski? A guy that, you know, did put up some numbers, but obviously not a team guy wasn't playing, missed the penalty. Are we losing that much? That I'd one, say no. That one, Wait. if if the whole sit-out, hold-out situation did not happen, I would say it was a big loss. But that's an entirely different conversation because if that didn't happen, he's still Absolutely. on the roster. Yeah, right? I agree. So that's two guys, big losses. This one's going to pain me because he was our captain, but are we really losing that much right now with the mirror being gone? Not as much, I think, in the long run. Like, yeah. like honest, be honest with yourself. Are we missing that much? Is the gap that these new players have to fill by those three so far that big? No. When Rubio Rubin came on. That was three, the, four years ago. 2021, three years. So my, what I guess what my argument is, at what phase do you start dumping players? Like, is three years uh, enough time to really have somebody yes. mesh? Yes. You yes. think so? Yeah. I, I think absolutely, especially with the way that he came in, he adapted to the team pretty quickly. He had some really nice goals, including that bicycle kick against San Jose that we'll probably always remember remember Ruby Rubin by. And but then vanished. The, but at the yeah, at the end of the day, it's 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 about consistency, and I don't think we ever saw that from Rubio. And then the last one, probably still controversial, but. I know he put up some numbers this year, but are we losing that much without Jefferson Saverino? I'll, I'll say, in the long run, probably not. Just like Demir, I think like both, it's all replaceable I think, numbers. I think both of those two players, while it sucks losing them now, I think in the long run, in the long run, it'll benefit Real Salt Lake a lot more. Right. So, in my opinion, this is just Josh's opinion here. We are in the cutting of dead weight phase. Yeah. Of the rebuild. Because Rubian was dead weight. Demir, 
as sad as it is to say, was essentially dead weight, right? You weren't going to get a lot out of him, unfortunately. Minutes wise, you know, just whatever. He, he was struggling. Musalski didn't even want to play for this team, right? Salvarino was disinterested. We're cutting the dead weight. This, in my opinion, this is great, right? Because it's guys that are underperforming on an overperforming team. So if we bring in guys that can put up their numbers plus some, we're instantly better. And those numbers are not hard to hit. Even Sava's numbers. Chicho's going to beat the hell out of this this year if he stays healthy. Like, I don't know. Yeah. I'm I'm oddly positive about all of the change. Uncharacteristically positive comment yeah. from Josh. Check yeah, back true. in August. We'll, <laughs> you know, but right now. So what do you think needs to change culture-wise, though, Josh? Because you're... It sounds like what you're saying is we have underperformers can be easily replaced. Yeah, I mean, I still think we're going to have the same locker room culture under Pablo. Um, you know, if anything, we're going to hopefully get better tactics, stuff like that, of the assistants. Sovereigno, from what I've heard, was kind of a cancer, right? Musovsky, a cancer. The dead weight leaving is probably better for the culture. But... This, I take all of this back if, you know, if players aren't brought in to replace Saverino, Lusovsky, et cetera, right? Someone has to come in to replace those numbers that isn't already on the squad. Well, and I think there's optimism that they will be replaced because we've, we're already seeing these names linked in the international market when really I, I, I haven't seen – as much international names linked to Real Salt Lake than I have over the course of the past two years. That's um, weird. Than prior to, you know? Yep. So, it, and plus there's, there's already that talk that Kurt Schmidt and, and company are heading over to, to Europe um, for a couple of weeks, which is fantastic. Go to Europe, go scout some guys, see what you can bring back. I love that. I love to, I love that they're taking that initiative. There is, with, there is without a doubt in my mind that they are going to replace what what has left because of what we've we've already the trend that we are already seeing um as far as uh bringing in signings yeah and if even if they're not 10 million dollar signings or five million dollar signings like you can bring in guys that'll perform just as well right loan players as long as someone comes in alex i'm gonna put you on the spot here real quick so if you're kurt schmidt and company and you're talking to talent in europe and Josh, you could chime in to help out Alex too. How would you guys market this team? What would be some of the phrases or quotes that you would use to attract talent to Real Salt Lake? What's your starting point? We have a Chicho. And we have mountains. That would be my starting point. Okay. <laughs> There's a pretty view from the stadium. <laughs> It's a great family friendly atmosphere. Yeah, no, keep going though. I mean, like, is there an opportunity to come and be the guy here? Absolutely. Is there an opportunity to be the captain? Is it is there an opportunity to to, to lead a new young team? I think yes. there's more than enough opportunity. And, and I think it starts with kind of not just what's happening within the Lake, but what's happening within the league. More people see MLS now as a completely different league than it was maybe say four or five years ago. Thanks, um, Messi. Pe- people, yeah, and especially now with Messi, people want to come. People want to come here, and if RSL is offering the right numbers, there's no reason why a player would 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 discredit Real Salt Lake's advances to try to bring him in. Right? Sell them on community. Sell them on on the fan base. Sell them on facility on the training facility. Um, a lot of player, a lot of people in the, I feel like in the international market now, especially in these lower teams in like the Netherlands. Um, in in third tier English clubs, okay. they'll look at they'll look at this as a major step up, and and hopefully decide to to come play for Elsa Lake. Uh, with Josh Windass, when I was looking at his highlights, the just the sheer amount of like people in the stands, the stadium, everything was just packed on that promotion match, and it's 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 like four times the size of the Real Salt Lake Stadium. So. When you see a rumor like that linked to come and play at a place like Salt Lake City, you can't help but think, okay, how is that an actual selling point? We love the fans. We're part of the fan base. We're we're a great fan base. But I, I like how you clarified what tier we would actually be appealing to because I think it would be hard for a big star named player playing in front of 
fifty thousand people to come yeah. here and play at a. You you guys know you guys have seen the stands, right? Yeah, yeah, but but Windass is coming from League One Championship, so he's not in the prem. So stadiums are about the same size or smaller, right? He did play in the big game at Wembley, but this is an upgrade. I clarified, the, you know, those those lower leagues, lower team, low, quote unquote lower, um, because you there's so much there's so much untapped talent there in my opinion that of that could come to MLS and be very successful we've seen it already kind of with Brian Ojeda who was a championship player prior to Real Salt Lake like yeah Nottingham was in the Premier League but he never really played in the Prem he was in the championship with Nottingham prior to saw this opportunity and took it and now he loves it here and i i truly believe that a signing like Windass would come here and and kind of follow that same path of of taking that step to MLS and, and enjoying it here in Salt Lake. And, you know, same with Dami. He came from Bundesliga too, right? FC Union were just getting promoted when he left. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it, it, it tracks. There's untapped potential there, and I love that Ralph Lake is going to those markets to to scout those players. What's What's with MLS really getting after, like, Scandinavia? Have you noticed that? Yeah. Like all of these Finnish, Norwegian, Swede, just all sorts of them coming over to like Chicago. Um, like Nashville signed a few. It's like I feel like every time I see a signing, it's some Viking name, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to take into account, man. It's like anything, any job, right? You're, you're watching your competitors. You're hearing conversations. You're overhearing. You know, maybe the water's better in that area. There's true talent, or maybe they sign somebody on and they're a killer, got a good deal. So I think, I think that's kind of what plays into to factors like those two. Yeah, I, I just think it's funny to watch league trends, right? Like one off season, everyone's in Argentina. One off season, everyone's you know over in France somewhere, and it's it's just kind of funny to watch how it moves around the globe where they're scooping guys up from. So, um. What else we got? Anything else? Uh, nothing we can really talk about. Well, go ahead, Alex. Sorry. Right now, it's a, a slower time of the year for sports. Um, but if you're looking for a fixin' for, for footy this weekend, uh, the United States men's national team will play, and there will be a special appearance by a Diego Luna. I hope he gets a start and scores a hat trick. <clears throat> He's starting. <clears throat> That would be amazing. <laughs> Alex is starting. I mean, Luna's starting. <laughs> Alex said Luna's starting. I think that's it. Yeah. There's it's just, a lot it's we really can't just, talk about. It's but, really just the yeah. rumors. Rumors. Do the rumors. 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 Do the rumors. Uh, we'll drop a rumor here. There might be changes at the RSL show. Hey. Uh, rumors. Uh, not you. Firing the intern. No, we're not firing the intern. <laughs> we wouldn't do that. We'd be nothing without the intern. Uh, There will be some changes, so stick around for those. That's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, aside from that, what else we want to say before we go? Hey, Josh, you you had something that you kind of said that you had that you couldn't hint. Uh, Do we want to go there? No. (laughs) No. We'll, we'll keep right. that. We'll keep that one in our in, up our sleeves for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. We got to hold off a little longer. Yeah. Very cool. All right, guys. All right. Well, uh, that concludes uh, just a brief episode of the RSL show. Follow us on KSL Sports. Uh, check out the YouTube page. Uh, follow us on Instagram. Send your questions. Uh, RSL show at gmail.com.